a person runs a business and through COVID, times got a little bit tough and the business suffered. And um, not mistaken, the person had some tax liabilities and debt. The company eventually that they ran, the business, was eventually liquidated. And they had certain issues with SARS. Um, they were advised to move an immovable property that this business owner owned into a trust, which would be safe from creditors. Um, is this the right advice? What advice can we no. give this particular individual? Cool. So um, the, the, the principle behind this is uh, the alter ego principle, um, just so everyone knows. So that's basically the name of um, the, the, almost the legal principle when uh, it's a trust exists, but for the purposes on pure. Right now, there's a lot of examples. There's a lot of examples that apply to the alter ego principle. So let me take this. Uh, let me take this question just back a notch. So if a company was liquidated and there were issues with SARS, the one thing that people need to remember when it comes to SARS, because we do quite a, ta- a bit of tax disputes when it comes to this, is the fact that SARS plays by different rules, um, and we need to remember this. So a lot of the scenarios that I like I would advise on, um, have to be distinguished between those where SARS is capable of collecting certain debts versus those where other creditors need to try collect debts. Uh, it doesn't matter what value these debts are, just it's, it, the problem is the Tax Administration Act it does give SARS more power than your normal creditor would have. Um, it it uh, Liability gets extended a lot easier with the Tax Administration Act. Uh, so whereas, for example, with a company, a person would only be liable if they were reckless or gro- grossly negligent or, or, or acting in a fraudulent manner, with SARS, there's different, um, uh, there's, there's easier forms of liability where a person might become liable to SARS. So, for example, when it comes to a tax uh, VAT, for example, a person that's responsible for collecting and accounting for VAT and releasing it back to SARS would actually be responsible for that payment to SARS if the VAT somehow doesn't find its way there. So that's just something to bear in mind uh, when it comes to extension of liability, a debt owed to SARS versus a debt of the company that was liquidated because a, a creditor of that company might only have recourse against that company. So once it's liquidated, there is no debt anymore. It's done, it's finished. Unless that creditor can prove that the directors of the company somehow acted very wrongfully, the same does not necessarily apply to SARS. So this goes to the question of, is it a good idea for me to move my property into a trust? If you're doing it simply to hide away from existing debt that you owe, Right. So in a SARS example, if you actually did owe this debt for some reason or another, moving it to a trust is not going to safeguard the property. If, however, the company owed some other creditors and there's no extension of liability, you as a director had no responsibility, you didn't sign a surety, you're good, then move it to the trust because you're not actually technically hiding it. You're simply just moving it for future purposes. And as far as we are concerned, you have no outstanding debt. So that's something to consider. Trying to hire uh, now. Now I'm going to move on to trust and the trust actually holding assets for the sake of asset protection. So existing debts, not a good idea to move it into the trust if you've got current existing debts, because creditors can find out, they can access that. If you ever, for example, uh, sequestrated, it is a um, transaction that can be set aside and reversed. So it's not safe. So you can try and move it, but you're going to spend a lot of money just to potentially have it moved back or having SARS consider the trust as some form of sham or alter ego, and they'll basically disregard the existence of a trust. So this happens a lot with creditors. It happens, there's two specific examples where it happens a lot. The, 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 le- the less used example, I saw there was a court case, I think it was with f and if I'm not mistaken, where the trust signed as a surety. The company that took out the debt was a shell company. Uh, the trust as a surety turned out they didn't have all that much assets. 
And the question there started becoming, hold on. Oh, sorry, wait. So the, the, the people signed as a surety. The trust had all their assets in it. And then when FNB actually went to look at this trust, they realized that the trust was totally a sham. Um, like all the transactions came from the, the, tr the, the trust bank account. People were paying parking and little takeaways and things like that. They were using it as their personal piggy bank. And the, ba and, and the court found that it wasn't a real trust. It was a sham trust. And another example where this happens a lot of is in divorces. So people that think they're being smart and they're married and they try and move assets out of whatever state that they have because they, they don't want to pay a cruel or they don't want to share in community of property, doesn't work. Uh, because chances are the other spouse is going to know that she had those assets to begin with. So when the divorce comes and suddenly this is not reflected in the reconciliation, uh, it's, it's going to be traced. And once it's traced, uh, the courts will disregard their trust. Uh, so basically what the courts do is they'll leave the trust, but they'll take the value of everything that's in the trust and they'll consider it or deem it to be part of your estate. So you still have to account for that when it comes to accrual. So is it a good idea? Yes, but not if you're trying to hide away from those circumstances I mentioned. For future, it's a good idea. So if you're going to get married at some point, then going into the marriage with your stuff already in a trust, not a bad idea. If you're going to incur debt at some point in future, that's okay too. The trust just cannot be your personal piggy bank. It has to have beneficiaries and it has to benefit them too. It's not just for you. Cool. Thanks, Bruno. That's very, very valuable advice.